Torrance. Good evening. Because food's a little funny at the Clown Cafe. Why not visit after school? Did you do that? Ah. Uh... And have yourselves a bite. An appetizing appetizer, certain to delight. We haven't done and right a mustard quid pro quo, Doctor. Billy is not a real transsexual, but he thinks he is. He tries to be. He's tried to be a lot of things, I expect. Now, you said that I was very close to the way we would catch him. What did you mean, Doctor? Makes your teeth decay, cause food's a little funny at the Clown Cafe. Drop on by. Terrifier and Terrifier 2 are respectively 2018 and 2022 horror movies directed by Damien Leone and starring David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown. Perhaps one of the most, well, either famous or infamous horror icons uh, over the last, you know, little shy of 10 years. Probably the biggest horror icon since Ghostface, which is pretty incredible, or maybe if you count Jigsaw, I suppose, from the 2000s. But in terms of a face, in terms of iconography, not talking about the movies, just Art the Clown, he's pretty iconic. There's a whole slew of merchandise of Art the Clown this year at all the Halloween stores, and the Terrifier movies have gained a pretty considerable cult following over the past several years. Now, Terrifier 3 is on the horizon. It's going to be in theaters. It's a Christmas horror film and doubles down on the absurd grotesqueness of the first two movies. Art the Clown first premiered in The Ninth Circle or something. It's a short film by Damien Leone and also the short film Terrifier from 2011, which was featured in the anthology movie All Hallows' Eve, which then eventually became the film Terrifier and its sequel, Terrifier 2. Both of these movies, specifically Terrifier 2, have been recommended to me numerous times. I am not a gore hound. Uh, I, I can tolerate gore, and sometimes it's very effective, but I don't usually go into a movie to see, like, a woman's face get ripped in half and me go, Ooh! It's just not my thing. Now, I do like movies that are pretty gory. I love the Saw franchise, but I go into those movies more for the, the interesting premises and the, the, the plot line and how convoluted it gets. I love the plot twists in it. I go in more uh, for the story, and the gore is just kind of like icing on the cake for me, I suppose. And sometimes I can be quite squeamish, so I do get a little ill at certain bits of gore. So when I heard about some of these leaked gore scenes from the Terrifier movies, I kind of braced myself because I knew they were going to get intense. I know Terrifier 3 has a pretty infamous shower scene. That's being compared to Psychos. And Terrifiers 1 and 2 have their respective shock scenes, with the first being the hacksaw scene and the second being the bedroom sequence. Uh, and what I can say about the Terrifier movies up front is that I respect Damien Liam because he's, a, he's an independent artist, right? He's a, he's a um, special effects guy. And his effects are pretty solid. You know, he does good work. And David Howard Thornton has become kind of an icon in his own right, doing all of these other crazy slasher movies. He did that movie, The Mean One, which is the Grinch parody. He's been in all these other horror movies since Terrifier because he's just so darn fun. He's very expressive. He has the great mannerisms. He's like a mime but a really disturbing mime that still has that tongue-in-cheek flavor, still winking at the audience like, hey, we know this is ridiculous. He plays the character of Art the Clown really well, and I understand why Art himself is a horror icon. However, much like Jason from the 80s was a huge horror icon, but not all the Friday the 13th movies are good, 
Art the Clown surpasses the Terrifier movies. Because these movies are bad. <laughs> and I know that that opinion is going to get me in hot water by several fans. And, you know, save your comments for the end if you're going to watch this video. Or you can write off my opinion from the very get-go. But I'm going to explain myself as kindly as I can as to why I hate these movies. Now, this is not an attack on any people a part of the film. In fact, I, I, I know some people who were a part of these movies, uh, at least in some relation. And Damien Leone, again, I respect the guy. He's, you know, making waves in the horror community. And again, I think uh, David Howard Thornton is a great actor. There are elements of these movies that I think are fun and campy. I like that they try to invoke the spirit of Halloween, although I don't think they always hit that mark. They're definitely trying, which I, I can respect. But fundamentally, the movies just aren't good on a variety of components. I can forgive technical stuff because the first film was made on a budget of around $35,000. Very minimal budget for a, a feature-length film. So I give them kudos for that. It doesn't look very good. Uh, the cinematography is odd. There are a few shots that I liked. There are too many garish lighting choices. It's very blasted. And the color correction is, is kind of funky. It looks like they put an iMovie filter over the whole movie. Thanks. What the hell is wrong with you? What, did you think he was gonna hack me up into little pieces or something? What can I get for you, buddy? Hey. But again, I can look past technical components, even for Terrifier 2, which increased that budget. I think it's like... I don't know if it was half a million or a quarter million or whatever it was, but it was considerably more. Terrifier 3's budget is, I think, like two or three mil, so they definitely kept upping it. But the first two films, they don't look the best, but I can, I can look past that. They're not acted the best either. And this is no offense to this actress because I'm sure she's, you know, doing a lot better all these years later, but the mom from Terrifier 2 specifically constantly took me out of the movie. Your brother brought a dead animal to school this morning. Are you drunk? And I kept going, what am I watching? It, it was very aggravating. So the, the, the cinematography isn't great. The acting isn't stellar. The, the music, I mean, I guess it's going for this campy approach, but it really... I don't know, it just felt kind of stock, if you will, kind of cheapy. And then, worst of all, the characters, if you want to call them that, and the story, if you want to call it that. Slasher movies have had a history of never really being super plot thick, you know? There's a killer, and they try to kill people. Even if you go back to Halloween or Black Christmas, they're not the most crazy plots, but at least they have a few characters that you latch on to and you care and you want to see what happens to them. There's suspense because you're, you're afraid for their safety. Okay. That's usually how it goes. The Terrifier movies, they have lore, but they don't have a story. Think of The Shining. The Shining has lore. There's this haunted hotel. There, it was it built on an Indian burial ground. This guy killed his daughters there. Jack the Clown has a history of alcoholism. All of that is a part of the lore, but that is not the story of The Shining. The story of The Shining, of course, is what's presented in the film. With the family unit breaking down, being isolated and trapped in this creepy, possibly haunted hotel. That is the story. Terrifier has scenes, and it has a backstory and maybe some kind of lore. I watched this video to try to give this movie the benefit of the doubt, specifically Terrifier 2, talking about Sienna, how she was destined to take down Art the Clown, blah, 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 blah. It all sounds like Five Nights at Freddy's fans, uh, you know, pooping their pants when they find out what color Purple Guy's underwear is. 
That test comes in the scene that so many people say should have been cut from the movie, but is one of the most pivotal and important sequences. This is not a dream. It's, forgive me for this description, please. A divine test from some outer being. It doesn't really matter. It's just fake facts. It's, it's facts that don't mean anything. What matters in a movie are the characters and the story that the journey they go on. Now it's, de you know, again, with slasher movies, it's debatable how much or how deep you get into that. And, and sure, I could point to many uh, slasher horror movies that I like that have a pretty weak story or weak characters. For instance, I love Friday the 13th 5. I admit it's a crappily done movie, but at least it's a fun ride. I was bored through these two movies. There's little suspense. There's a, 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 a no, you can't tell where characters are in relation to one another. You can't even see where Art the Clown is in comparison to other characters. I'm like, wait, who's in the room right now? I can't, like Halloween, you see Laurie running from Michael. You can see where he is in relation to her. And as he approaches, the tension builds because the threat is getting closer. I didn't know where Art the Clown was throughout the majority of these movies. He shows up, sometimes he does a silly gag, sometimes he has this brutal kill scene. I suppose that's to make him uh, like a surprise killer, but it just didn't work for me. And I know there are a lot of fans that love these movies, and I don't want to take away your enjoyment of the film. Because that's the great thing about movies, right? They're subjective. But when I see so many people praising this movie, Up the Wazoo and Art the Clown... I wonder if they actually care about the film itself or that Art the Clown is a bad A and that he kills people really grotesquely. It reminds me of the hype for Megan. Megan wasn't a great movie, but Megan, the character, was different, had an interesting character design. But it goes back to, like, Jeff the Killer. Not a good story, but Jeff the Killer's kind of cool because he has a knife and a hoodie, I guess, and that makes him special? Didn't work for me. Uh, and I know a lot of people go, well, Sienna's a great final girl. How? What is her character? What does she do to prove herself? She gets whipped in the back a few times and then pushes Art the Clown over? It, it didn't earn that status to me. And every scene before even meeting Art the Clown... The characters only discuss Art the Clown. That's all there is to their lives. Oh, did you hear about that killer? Art the Clown, Art the Clown. That's it. There's no, there's nothing else. If you can tell I'm getting frustrated by this, well, you'd be right. But I, I, I have to say that I think the reason that I do get frustrated is because ever since I was a kid, the horror genre has meant a lot to me, whether that be through short stories or movies or books or whatever, even just Halloween itself. It matters clearly a lot to me. When I see things that are so popular for the wrong reasons, it rubs me the wrong way and it makes me upset. Like Smile, stupid smiley movie got so popular for all the wrong reasons. And then I see films that are so good like the substance that just came out, no one cares, hardly. There are people that care, I take that back, but in the public eye, very few people know about this movie or watch it, but everyone knows about Art the Clown, and it just aggravates me. <sighs> yeah. I actually think, this is crazy, I prefer Terrifier 1 over 2. Yes, it's more poorly made, but at least it doesn't waste my time. Terrifier 2 being 2 hours and 20 minutes longer than The Exorcist and Rosemary's freaking baby is absurd, frankly. So many scenes are drawn out for no reason, not even to pad uh, suspense or anything, like a John Carpenter movie might elongate sequences to, to invoke dread. There's none of that. 
There are scenes where Sienna goes to school and talks to her friends, but it's not to build any sort of relationship or character. It's just to talk about the lore or to talk about this notebook. And, uh, and yes, there are some good kill sequences, sure. The bedroom scene, very shocking. The hacksaw scene, also very shocking. And I have no doubt that Terrifier 3 will have even more grotesque blood and guts. But is it worth it? The original Halloween, which might be the best slasher movie ever, or Black Christmas, throw it in there as well, they hardly have any blood or guts. They rely on tension and suspense, the feelings of dread, and the inevitability that the killer will find you. Despite Art the Clown having these crazy creative gimmicks to kill people with, I, it didn't scare me. It's gross, but it's not scary. And... It's, it honestly is just kind of sad, you know, just to see these random people just getting killed. But there's no emotion to it. I don't know anything about these characters. It's more or less the actor or actress getting their face sawed off. And yes, the Saw movies don't give a lot of in-depth into their characters, but we at least get little nuggets of their personalities. I really didn't get to know anything about anybody here. Uh, well... I'm glad I watched the Terrifier movies, so I don't have to watch them again. And I don't know if I'm going to be seeing Terrifier 3, because I'm probably going to feel the same way as I did the other two. If people are saying that Terrifier 2 is better than Terrifier 3, and I like Terrifier 1 more than Terrifier 2, and I didn't like Terrifier 1, we're in for a bad time. What I can say is, Damien Leone... I respect you. You're doing your craft. You know, you're doing your great effects. You made a horror icon out of David Howard Thornton's Art the Clown, which is very commendable. But please, if there's someone who has the passion to write a better story, more interest, intricate characters, please let them fulfill their passion in the same way you have been able to fulfill yours. I'm sorry, I'm going to give Terrifier 2 a 1 and Terrifier 1 a 1.5. That was a weird way of grading it. Point is, both of these movies are not very good, in my opinion. But opinions, they're like butts. Everybody has one. It doesn't mean you have to look at mine. So there you go. If you love these movies, I'm happy for you. I don't go into movies trying to hate them. I don't like being a negative Nelly. I, I wanted to champion this movie because it's so popular. It's getting horror out there. And it is, in some ways, pushing the boundaries of the genre, which is commendable. I just think it's pushing the boundaries in one direction, but failing on a lot of other fronts. For instance, a song might have a really great drum line. You go, wow. Oh, that, that drum beat goes hard. That's a good drum beat. But the guitar, the vocals, the synth, it all sucks. That's Terrifier. Art the Clown's great in the gore, but the characters, the story, the cinematography, the acting, it all is missing. And I can't praise a movie highly because of that. And some might say, well, just turn your brain off and enjoy the movie. If you turn your brain off, then you miss the intricacies of the movie-going experience. I can have my brain on or off while watching a movie like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and I enjoy it either way, because it's still a well-made, fun movie, and it's dumb. I didn't feel like Terrifier or Terrifier 2 earned either of those titles. Well, there you go. My negative rant on the Terrifier movies yeah, I know, it's a shame. But hey, if you like them, great. I don't. Remember, for all things Halloween, this is Hauntformer. Drop on by the Clown Cafe. Drop on by the Clown Cafe.